when Jesus raised the roof, we lifted higher. He lifted the roof higher. Jesus can lift the roof off a building to do a miracle. We can raise the roof roof to lift his name higher. We're so good to see you today. Before we get seated, I want to give you my passage. This is week two of the final week. It's only a two-week series of Tis the season. This is our Christmas sermon. Tis the season to be jolly, to lift him up. What do you think, Taz? To lift him higher. What do you think, Caleb? To lift him up. See, in the front row, I can pick on them. To lift him higher. It's the final week of Tis the Season. This is our Christmas service. This is the last live service of 2020. I hope you're online watching right now because we're here. And I hope you are too. Because we need to do this together. And if you're not here on Sunday mornings with us, it's not the same. We're here to lift up his name together. So I pray you lean in this morning and let's lift up his name in this final week. Before you're seated, I want to give you this quick passage in Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. It says, And it came to pass in those days that a decree or census went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. I mean, that's not where he was living. That wasn't his house address. But it was because he was of the house of and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who he was engaged to, who was with child conceived by the Holy Spirit. No, it's not like that, says Joseph, says God. This child came from the spirit conception. It's not like that. We do it God's way. We don't take shortcuts. We do it God's way. And when you do it God's way, God will bless it. So it was, verse 6, while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. Oh, boy. They're out of town, and the baby is ready to come out. Verse 7, and she brought forth her her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the holiday inn. (laughs) He's shaking his head. There was no room for them at the, in the inn. I'm sorry, it's called an inn. Y'all may be seated this morning. Touch your neighbor and tell them we need a miracle to manifest this morning. We need a miracle to manifest See, y'all don't know that my boys were fighting in the front row when I walked up, and that's what you got to do when, you, when you're doing it for the Lord. See, nobody else knows, but I know, I know their faces, and I can tell when they got certain faces on their face that dad needs to give the finger point. Ain't that right? Now they're being super good. Praise the Lord. The Spirit is in this place, Nate. Before we get going this morning, seriously, though, Each year, we're going to do this thing called Miracle Month, and this year, well, we didn't get off to starting Miracle Month in December like we normally would because of corona, but next December, we will celebrate Miracle Month, and what that is is every year, and prior to corona, we were already doing this, but now we've officially titled it Miracle Month, and that's where we find a charity. We typically help the crisis nursery, and we also work with Friends of Wings, which are children in hospice, the crisis nursery is children um, that have uh, families in domestic disputes, domestic violence, and they're housed and taken care of by the crisis nursery. And so we like to come together as a church and give back to the community. And next year, Miracle Month, we'll be driving towards our December miracle, which we will deliver in Miracle Month. But also, we also do a thing we did at the beginning of this month um, called the End of Your Offering. And this year, 
We did the end of your offering, and we also are doing a pledge for a very specific purpose that you can be a part of. Touch your neighbor and tell them you can be a part of something big for God in a very practical way. And that's through your giving and generosity into God's house. We're doing a pledge, a building pledge campaign because we're looking to buy a building and it's not, it's not a pipe dream. It's a real thing and it's going to happen. And I just want to tell you that anything you can do to join with us, you're making a difference. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. You can go to 1cchurch.org slash pledge. And when we show up soon with a building, <laughs> oh boy, I'm speaking it out loud. Does that mean I declare it and decree it? When we show up with a building and they go, how'd that happen? Well, this is how it happens. It's collectively. 1cchurch.org slash pledge. What it is, is it's a form, and you can join with us to pledge together. Me and Michelle have done it. Several people in the church have done it, and even people outside the church. They're looking for something to invest in with, with their generosity, and sometimes they don't know where to go. So if you trust One Seat Church and you trust the mission here, and I pray you do because it's authentic as, as can be, you can pledge with us, with us over the next three years. Our goal is to raise $500,000 in the next three years, and that is going to help acquire, build out, and maintain one seat's permanent home. And it's coming. It's coming. I can't wait for that day when we get to talk about it. It's going to be amazing. But it's in God's timing. And we trust God and his timing. And we don't trust things by how corona makes them look. We, we trust the soil by what's underneath. And we know what's underneath. And God is good. And we are thankful. And we give praise for that. So that's that. Next week, don't go on vacation because we have a very special online only. See, see, online only wasn't a, really a thing until this year. Now everybody's online. So normally we were going to be online only, Nolani, the last week of the year. But then we've been online only the whole year. So now it's becoming like a normal term. But at the end of the year, each year, we do a look back at 1C Church, a year in review. And you wouldn't think that there'd be so many things that happened to a, a church, a mobile church. Well, it's just a church. There's just one. There's, just, there's not much to it, right? No, yeah, there is. There's 35 minutes of me and Michelle talking about all the roller coaster rides we've been through. And we're going to be sharing some really cool footage and showing the journey we've been on this year. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat in hindsight. Let me, let me put it that way. It's pretty neat in hindsight. I don't know if I'd want to go back to some of those things. But it's been a journey, and it's made us stronger. And what doesn't kill us, as the saying go, only makes us stronger. And God is pruning the branches. Let me tell you, God is good. He is sharpening the iron of this church. So next week, tune in. Online, look and review. Year in review, me and Michelle will sit in the comfort of our home with the fireplace going and our one-seat cups on the mantle for nice marketing. And we will talk about this year at One Seed Church. But today we're going to wrap up and celebrate a gift, a special gift. Who likes gifts? We talked about it last week. Nobody liked gifts in here. It was really weird. And then finally Caleb said, I do. I like gifts. Kaylee, do you like gifts? She's giving me the weird look. That's Don't talk to me, Dad. I get bashful in front of people, or any type of attention. I only really act out when I'm at home and no one's looking, then I do my real mischief, she says. We're talking about gifts. Last, year, last week, we were talking about lots of presents. It's, it's, Christmas is all about lots of God's presence. God's presence is supposed to be all year round, not just Christmas morning, but the presence of God is, is around us all year round, and we have close proximity to his presence at will, at our fingertips, it's the awareness we lose touch of sometimes because of the situation that we feel like God is distant. God can't be distant. He's never distant. And so this week, we're going to drill in a little further about a delivery, a special delivery comes today. It comes today via UPS to a manger near you. And, and I don't know about you, but as I've gotten older, the best gifts are the ones I didn't expect the ones that are completely off my grid of what I think I would enjoy. They show me 
that there's a better me. Like when I get that cheese and sausage tray, it shows me that there's a fatter me. I mean, a better me. It shows me that in the new year, man, I'm going to be hitting that treadmill. But in December, I am thankful that someone would pleasantly surprise me. Michelle, thank you for, for always pleasantly. Michelle, she likes to drop these, these cheese cracker things on me different times throughout the month. And I love it because it's a surprise. It's not that it costs a bunch of money or that it's some spectacular thing that's going to impress anybody else, but it's something that's special to me and unexpected. And everybody has gifts they like to get like that. I'm winking at Michelle in case she wants to hook me up with some more cheese, sausage, crackers. But that stuff spoils. The gift we're talking about today can't spoil. It's eternal. Its life expectancy is forever. The plan is forever. The mission is temporary. The package didn't last as long as we thought. The package looked a little questionable when it arrived, but something special is about to happen. Today's title is Miracle Manifest. Something special is about to happen. Something miraculous is about to happen. We've waited and waited, and now God has a special delivery in store just for you. Everybody take your phones, put them on selfie mode, look at yourself, and I'm going to say that again. Just for, you look at yourself say, you. Snap a photo of yourself and put on social media, whatever you want to do. A special delivery just for you. God's promise is special, guys. It's special because this delivery is not based on if it's available. It's not based on if the sender sends it. It's not based off some crazy, can I say crazy lady, tries to swipe it off your porch and throw it on eBay during the Christmas season because she thinks everybody's, nobody's looking, but everybody's got ring cameras. And so if you try to take boxes off my porch, I've got like 30 cameras looking at you. I'm not talking about that kind of situation. Who lives in St. Charles County? Anyway, lady, I'm just saying, you're messing with the wrong tribe. I'm not talking about that kind of gift. This gift can't be stolen. This gift, this gift can't run out of stock. The only way you can't receive this gift is if you don't accept the package. It's if you don't accept the package. So what if a package was en route and it showed up at your doorstep maybe Christmas this year? Let's just say Christmas morning, hypothetically. I'm not picking that date for any particular reason. But look, what if a package showed up Christmas morning? And all you theologians, I know we don't know the date. It's just for, for narrative. I know we don't know the date. I know we just picked the date for celebration purposes. Don't get hung up on the date. We're making an illustration here, theologians. Do you want to make sure you're home for this one? Because you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. See, God will manifest miracles when we obey and follow his, well, his manifest, his word. He will manifest in the action as we follow his manifest in the noun, his word. But you got to register to be on the notification list. You got to register. You see, it said, that, it said that Joseph and Mary were out of town, but they had to register. They had to register so people knew to alert them of the notification that the package was available. Because you know how it is. If you don't get your UPS tracking on your text and you don't get your FedEx, especially when a signature is required and you're not home or you're not at the right place, what happens? They take it back. They take that package back. Is that not just the most frustrating when you know they didn't actually come to the door? Come on, somebody. Who loves, I can't say their name. Who loves, it, it's, the first letter is F and the, the second word is E and you put them together and it makes it work. Who, lo who loves when they, they come to the door, but they don't come to the door and they say, customer didn't answer the door. Uh, I was sitting there. My camera saw you not walk up to my door. So now it's different because the cameras are there, but before that's what would happen. And registration mattered. Registration matters. They had to register no matter where they were. And they had to register from where they came from. 
So it's, it's ironic that they're out on the road, you know, and, 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 and Joseph went to Bethlehem because he was from the seat of David. It was odd that he'd register there, even though they were at, you know, 2917 Nazareth Street next to Nile River or wherever. I don't know. I'm not a geographic guy, but that's Egypt. Anyway, normally if we're not home, we miss the package. But when you register, because it matters, maybe the package will find you. Maybe the package will find you in this situation, even though you're not home. What are you signed up for this morning? What are you signed up for? Well, I just signed up for a really cool thing. It's drinktrade.com. It's a coffee subscription. And it's supposed to be this the finest beans from all over the finest roasters. And they, you pay a monthly fee, like every two weeks, you pay like $10 or something. And they send you this the finest bag of whole beans because they profile my interest before they decide what is the best kind of coffee for me. They profile me and say, what kind of pot do you use? Do you like ground? Do you like whole bean? How often do you drink coffee? Do you like light, medium, dark roast, medium roast? So you sign up and guess what happens? They're going to ship me a bag each week. Each, every two weeks, I can't drink it that fast. And they, they, every two weeks, they're going to ship me a bag and I'm going to get a notification when it's on its way because they're going to ship it to my house. And if I would leave my house, the bag's not going to come find me. I'm signed up for a coffee subscription, but I didn't, I'm not paying enough for them to follow me anywhere I go. But God's word is different. And when God has a plan and you're willing to register for his delivery, he's going to find you no matter where you go to bring you a package. Man, that UPS driver is not happy that he's having to go to Bethlehem instead of his usual route over in Naz. In fact, he's, he's angry. He's angry about this. But registration matters. That's on you. God says, I got the package. But if you're not willing to register for delivery, you're saying, I don't really care to receive the package. So we've, we've trained ourselves to often not register or opt out from this list because we just think the seating is limited for certain people. I'm not qualified to receive this delivery. You're not qualified to receive something that landed in a stanky manger? Who is? Is anybody? The Pharisees say I. What about the man who, cast, who, cast, who was going to cast the last stone? You know, at the woman in, in the adulterous, adulterous, adultery. And Jesus said, he who's without sin, let him cast the last stone. And the, the, they froze. So last time I checked, no one was qualified to register, to not register, disqualified from registering. Sorry, I haven't had enough caffeine this morning. Maybe that bag will show up today and I'll speak a little clearer. Registration matters and you're qualified by the calling to register. You are not disqualified, disqualified by your past from not registering. God says, don't cop out on me. Oh, did he just say copping out on me? Can we be real? Don't cop out on Christ because God has a delivery for you. And when we cop out on Christ, we are saying we're not really interested in the delivery. And in order to obtain this delivery, we got to register. We got to let them know, God, I want the package. God, I want this package. God's not going to football toss you a package while you're driving down the freeway to worldly life. You got to say, no, God, I want this package. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go wherever you say to go, God. And that's what Joseph and Mary are willing to do. They're willing to register, drive somewhere uncomfortable, have a baby in a manger, do whatever it took because they wanted the seat at the show. They wanted the seat in the registration. Some of you think that God has run out of stock for your life. The inventory is empty. God says, my inventory never runs dry. Had they not registered, you realize when they registered, they, they fulfilled a prophecy. Let's jump to Micah chapter five, verse two. They fulfilled a prophecy, not only by registering, but by where they registered. Micah 5, 2, when you have a say amen. I don't know if I put this on the thing. I didn't. But you, Bethlehem, Apothra, though you are little among thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth and from of old 
from everlasting. Isn't it funny that God set up a delivery in the least expected place and the least likely place to find something you would be desiring because it was not at your home, your residence, where you typically would register your PayPal to, where you typically would register your Amazon Prime account to. This was in an undisclosed location, but God said, I'm going to take you off the grid in order for you to receive this package because I don't do things the way you expect them to be. I don't deliver them the way you expect them to be delivered. You know, one of the reasons the Jews crucified the Messiah is because he didn't look right. He didn't feel right. He didn't do it the way they expected him to do it. And Jesus said, in, Jesus came in Matthew, the, cult, the, the audience of Matthew was the Jews. That's why we use all these cultural terms that only Jews understand in that world because Matthew was speaking to the, to the Jews and they still said, well, he doesn't, doesn't fit the profile of what I expected. God said, it's not how I do it. When you register for what I'm going to deliver, I'm going to make it so different than what you expected that you can only know that it had to be God that set this package delivery up. If I just sent it to your house in a nice shiny bow, anybody could do that. Anybody can go online and order it through Amazon Prime. But I'm going to send you off the grid into Bethlehem, and I'm going to fulfill the prophecy because my word never returns void. And if I said it back then, I'm going to fulfill it right now. So when God called you three years ago to ministry, He says, if I said it back then, I'm going to fulfill it. So you just keep stepping, stepping, stepping. That maybe where I'm taking you for this delivery is not where you planned. Maybe the building don't look like what you planned, Pastor. Maybe the setup don't look like what you planned. Maybe everything you planned actually will be tossed aside because I have a plan and my plan is the one that stands Touch your neighbor, tell him, it's his plan that stands. Your plans shall crumble. His will shall be done. Not my will be done, but your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So Joseph and Mary are going, this is so crazy that now I'm going to give birth to this child in the middle of nowhere and there's no Holiday Inn and there's no, there's no Hampton Inn, Hampton Suites. If you ever go to Mississippi, they got the best Hampton Inn. It's the bomb down in Tupelo. I love it. It's got a great pool. You walk in, they got the coffee sitting there ready for you after driving all those hours. It's not like that because it's full. Instead, it's a construction site next door with a, with a, a, a barn or a shed, a manger, And there's some horses in there. And if you need some covering, you can go in there and give birth to your promise. (laughs) She thinks she's delivering the Messiah. Who would deliver a package in that kind of package wrapping, in that kind of environment? What kind of God would send a package so dirty and broken down that the world would refuse it? Our God would. That's how God does it. He's got to take away our spiritual Snobbiness? Is that, is that a word? Snobbiness? That's why I got to go to school, because my grammar is, it needs work. Work, 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 it needs work. And, um, you know, until we can shake our preconceived notions of Christianity and our snobbiness of how good we look on Facebook when we post about all the good things God has done, and in the back door, we're doing all the bad stuff because no one can see it. <laughs> like, you know, come on, somebody. That's not the mission. That's not God's will. That's the devil pulling wool over your eyes. That is not the will of God. So don't eat the fruit because the devil's a liar, okay? He's a liar. But what God actually called was supposed to happen in the manger. So God called you to the manger. So quit showing everybody the Hilton because God called you to the manger. The baby, just so you know, the baby is coming to the manger not the Hilton. And the only way you're going to really know where the baby's going to be is through registration. It's through registration. Had they not registered, they would have not fulfilled the prophecy. And it's down to the wire. Excuse me, I gotta, like, I'm not used to this Bible being here and all these papers and I have to have it a certain way or it makes me weird because I'm weird. It's down to the wire Tomorrow's no guarantee, you know. This is supposed to be an uplifting message. I'm going to get there. Tomorrow's no guarantee this holiday season. 
<laughs> as we talk about. Tis the season to be jolly. But tomorrow is still no guarantee. You can be jolly when you know that right now, I got to give it all to God. Right now, my focus has to be all in for Jesus Christ, even if it reeks in that manger. And that's Mary and Joseph. Now, they could have said, this is what they could have said. I'm not home. I'm sorry, God, but I'm not home. And I'm not delivering this baby until I can be in the hospital I preferred to go to with my delivery nurse or, or doctor and, and the way I wanted it to be. And I'm not home. So what's going to happen then when God says it's time to deliver and you're, you're not where you plan to be, how are you going to ha- handle it? They were out of town. Oh, my Lord. I can't even imagine. Can you imagine if they had our four kids, Michelle? And then there was a baby and there was a manger involved and they had their tablets and the batteries died. Can you imagine that scenario in the manger if the batteries to the tablets had died while, while, the, while the, you're, you know, giving, this is weird, giving birth to the Messiah. This is getting weird. So, but what I'm saying is like, if it's, if it's, not, if it's not catered to the way we want it, we reject it. But that's not what they did. They could have said, I'm not home, God. God says, I didn't want you to be home for this package. You weren't meant to be home for this one. You were meant to be in Bethlehem. You were meant to be in Bethlehem. You know, sometimes a scenery change is good. You ever been around somebody that is super, super cranky all the time? And then you take them somewhere nice and their mood changes and you realize their stress has been associated by their surroundings. And when you take them out of the stressful surroundings, you realize they're not a bad person, like I thought. (laughs) They're not crazy like I thought. They're actually got a soft heart inside. It's because the surrounding was wrong. So God says, I need to get you out of town for this registration. I don't care that you're not home. I don't want you to be home. This package is not going to your home home. This package is going to a special destination. So maybe God is working something special for you, but it's not where you're looking for. It's not on your front porch this time. When you register with God, you've now validated that he will meet you where you're at, where you're at. If it's a breakdown in your car, he'll meet you in the car. If God has to get you saved in a car, he'll do it. If God has to get you, get you, get you off the street and, and you coming in smelling like that and, and you, you're starving for God, and God says, I'll bring the package there. We had that a couple weeks ago. God will meet you where you're at, but you got to say, I want in and I want to register for this because I want to be notified of this delivery no matter where I'm at. Am I willing to go? This is the hard part. This is what makes Christianity hard. This next point right here is what makes Christianity like actually a mission and not just an impressive thing a Pharisee thing? No, that's not Christianity. That's, that's, the law. that's the Pharisee thing Jesus rejected. This is what makes Christianity Christianity is that I'm willing to go where God has called me to go. And it's first. And it's first. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know how many people thought they were probably crazy to even leave town? At the, at the, she was like 39 and, and six days pregnant. She had like one day to her due date, and she was ready to set up at the, at the NAS hospital, and everything was all good, and they were going to have the hot chocolate machine ready for, for Joseph as he's waiting all night, sleeping on that horrible bed that they don't, they don't give the dads a good bed. They let the, I know, they're just the dad, and they just, but at least they got the hot chocolate machine. I'm not bitter. And, they, and then the, and everything was set up for them, and they had the little snack machine with the free Cheetos and all the things ready for Joseph, but God said, that's not how it's going to happen. Anybody ever had a child in a hospital and gotten the free hot chocolate and Cheetos or pretzels? Anybody? Nobody. Just me. Hypothetically, of course. I'm not home. Has anybody ever had um, AirPods? Hospitals, AirPods, birth. This is weird. Apple AirPods, they're like the little, they look like cool earrings and you talk and like it's a cool thing to leave them in. It means people know on social media that you're down because you got the AirPods. I just bought some. Anyway, so like, but I don't have Apple products. And my brother was saying, because he just switched from Android to iPod, uh, uh, iPhone, 
like everybody else in the world. And, and he, he says, if I lose my AirPod, now they got this thing where I just press a button. And guess what happens? My AirPods start beeping. Beep. 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 Oh, there they are in the crack of the couch. Beep. Beep. Oh, there they are in the kitchen by the garbage disposal. Taz, you touching my AirPods? <laughs> Beep. Beep. See, see, God has an alert system. It's like a sonar. It's going to find you. It's going to find you when you've registered, no matter if you're at home or if you're gone, that when the package is ready and you can't find it, God's going to say, go to the manger. Beep. 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 This, is, this can't be right. This can't be it. This, ugh, it stinks in here. This can beep. Beep, 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 beep. Dare I say, like an AirPod. You know, Jesus has a lot better technology than Apple does. And it doesn't require batteries, thank God. If it can work in a manger, it can work today. Your life isn't limited by batteries, and it's not limited by qualifications, and it's not limited by hard times. God reveals good in these hard times if you let him. God will manifest a miracle when we obey and follow according to his manifest. Obedience is such a strong word. I don't like that. It's like telling me what to do. I'm just saying the Bible, if we obey, it's a a form of obedience. And obedience shows your heart. Obedience is critical to seeing God's miracle manifest in your life. You want to see God manifest? It takes obedience. It takes obedience, Taz. Caleb, it takes obedience. Mary was a vessel for Jesus, but it didn't stop there. She was just the first vessel for Jesus. You know, you're called to be the arms and feet. Some people probably don't even know what that means. Isn't that sad? I've been going to church 20 years. What does he mean when he says, I'm the arms and feet of Christ? You should know. You should know by now. And if you don't, somebody should share it with you. But you are now called to be a vessel for the baby who rose, who died, who rose again who left, who is here. He redeemed us through the infilling of his spirit. Now we carry it when we become new and we're born again according to Acts 2. Now we carry the baby everywhere we go. We're a vessel like Mary. Just because we're not literally pregnant, did you know when the word gets in you and you feel called to repentance, you're pregnant with the word. You're pregnant with the, God, with the word of God inside of you. There's a pregnancy brewing in your belly. And people say, I feel the presence of God. What is that? That's the pregnancy of the baby trying to grow inside your spiritual womb. That's good. Because it's true. And as you nurture the baby and you grow, you'll watch something manifest that's going to come pouring out of you. And now your life is changing in a way you never thought you'd do that for a job. You never thought you'd talk that way to a person in a good way. You thought you only had it this way, and that's how it would always be. But God says, when you register for my delivery and you accept it with open arms and you follow what I have, what I have guided you with in my word, miracles will manifest deliveries aren't late. They're actually on time. The delivery is on time here. It only took 2,000 years, but that was perfect. That's what God intended. Where has God been? I've been praying and calling and asking and nothing's happening. He's not there. No, God says it's not my time. And if I try to explain to you something spiritual that is over your senses, you will just not understand anyway. So take it for what it is that I have your best interest and that I've given enough that you may believe that if the world did all the miracles that I, that I did, the world can contain the book, says John. So I'm going to tell you right now that I know enough that I've got you covered. I created you. It's not my time yet. Touch your neighbor, tell him it's not your time. But remember, the delivery is on time. This delivery It's not late. Christmas season isn't slowing this package. In fact, this package is what created Christmas season. 
That means I had it backwards all these years. That means I had it backwards all these years. Maybe I've been looking at it all backwards all these years. And that because I was the center of my problem, I can never get out of my problem. And God says, when you make me the center of your life, I will get you out of the problem that is the center of your focus. I'm trying to give you something. You keep jumping quick marks. You keep jumping 7-Elevens, and they're all out of the Slurpee. God says, I'm going to bring you what you need. I'm going to bring you what you need. My delivery isn't late. It's on time. We all know this, that his time, this sounds cliche. This is true. I'm going to say it again because it's true. His timing doesn't always match our timing, but his timing is perfect. And that preach is really good, and we can amen and shout about that. But when it comes to a dilemma, like a moral or ethical dilemma in our life, and we got to make a decision, we can actually compromise that belief. Says Abraham, well, let's go make a baby over here. Says Joseph, well, uh, she's pregnant and that doesn't look right. And I have to really trust that this was by the spirit of God. I mean, you know what kind of faith Joseph had to have prior to this just to know that his virgin, um, soon to be spouse, engaged partner, what do you, what do you call it? Engagement person, girlfriend, soon to be wife. <laughs> you know, last time I preached on that, I said it wrong too. I didn't know the word for like pre, like engagement. Beyonce, yes. He could have really ran at that point. But to get to where Joseph is now, that he's willing to go to Bethlehem with pregnant Mary, he already had to believe something to get to this point. It took steps. You step, I step. It just didn't fall on all at once. Jesus gives a little and we follow. He gives you a little more, we follow. He did the same with the apostles. He gave them a little bit, and as the gospels went through, he got a little stronger with them, gave them a little more meat. And eventually he's saying, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, And they're going, he's crazy because he was conditioning them for more. To whom much is given, much is required. If you know the truth, it is your job to uphold the truth. And we have been called to uphold the manifest. It creates miracles. And it all started with this miracle. God will manifest miracles when we obey and follow his written manifest, he spoke through his life. What if God could change your entire life? Who am I looking to? In the camera. I don't know who's watching. I don't know who's watching but isn't saying they're watching. I don't know who's watching and they're getting a seed and we don't know about it. It doesn't matter if I know because God knows you're watching. And God can change your entire life entire thing. Yes, all of it. Even the job. Yeah, you might actually find something you enjoy. You might actually find a relationship you enjoy. You might actually have that family. You might actually have all these things. But it takes a faith to follow unconditionally to find out. You got to register. You got to be willing to go. And you got to believe on his timing. Believe on his timing. If you could all stand with me this morning as we acknowledge the greatest miracle to ever come upon man and that is the birth of Jesus Christ when we seek the root he will bear the fruit when we seek the root he will bear the fruit we seek the fruit too often church I'll go to church when they have this to sustain my interest in this and that. And God says, come build it. Lock arms and come build it. Seek the root and God will bear the fruit. God doesn't bear fruit without an interest in the root because the root is what produces. And we are all called to this ministry. You thought it was just preachers. Uh Uh-uh. If you call yourself a Christian, we are all called together to carry out the great commission. The baby entered Mary and Joseph's arms, but maybe today, for the first time in so many years that you thought it was too long to register, God says, I'm ready for you to enter my arms. God says, we're celebrating my birth, but I've come and gone, and now I've given you a chance for redemption, and I love you so much that I just want to hold you in my arms. 
this morning. Got these um, candles here. And um, they're real. Ooh, that burned me. Ooh, that's hot. (laughs) Well, we can't do real fire, but that would be fun, wouldn't it? Don't do fire in your living rooms. Well, if you do, we'll put a waiver on the website that you do not blame one seat church and the pastor for your three-year-old setting your family room on fire. But whatever, whatever floats your boat. (laughs) Come on, boys. Come on. Kaylee, come on. We practiced this before church. Practice helps make perfect. Come on, babe. Come on. Saying no. Okay, forget her. She's such a five-year-old. It's all right. She, she's not a pushover, which is good. That's a daddy's dream. You don't want a little girl that's a pushover when they grow up. Every year, you know, we're in a gym, and there's lights, and it's morning, and none of that matters because we bring our candles as part of our candlelight service. And someday it's gonna be really cool. Someday we're gonna have a Christmas Eve service at night. Maybe we'll do real candles. Maybe we'll have um, some of our members who have actual flamethrowers bring their torches. We'll just light the place up spiritually, spiritual emojis. But if you got a candle this morning, if you brought your candle to your family room, we ask you to light it with us because This is signifying way more than a flashlight, something that the batteries fall out of or go bad. This is representing an eternal flame, the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit that dwelt in Christ, the fire that was breathing through the womb of Mary, whose light never goes out, that arrived in a manger And I doubt there was lights. In fact, the only lights in that manger, I bet, were other candle lights, real candle lights. But the Bible says that Jesus was that light. And we cannot, the world cannot contain the light. And as a salt of the earth, we are to shine his light. And so as part of our witness and testimony of who Christ is in our life, we signify today his birth, his resurrection, his life. And we are thankful, Jesus, for all you have done. Just hold them up right now. We are thankful for all you have done, God. We are thankful that you delivered when you didn't have to. We're thankful that you allowed us to enter the manger with you. We're thankful that when the world says we can't be broken of this, that we're too far gone, that no rehab can help us, that no, that no psychological help can help us, that we've got the best therapy through you, Christ Jesus. No drug can help us. No drink can help us. The only thing that can make us whole and redeem us and make us new started with this in the manger. God, we give praise right now. And if we could all sing together as we honor the precious Messiah.
unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. And he will reign, establishing and upholding it with justice over the kingdom, with justice and righteousness. From that time on, forever.